I finally got around to playing The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild a few weeks ago. Damn, it's a good game. From my observation, in most games there are three tiers to game design. There's the second to second gameplay focusing on game feel and immediate mechanics like shooting or parkour. Then you get the sort of larger areas, related to things like level design, guiding the player through areas and often some more elaborate puzzle design. And then finally there is the grander core mechanics that drive the entire game, like the exploration of your open world or process of discovering and completing four divine beasts in order to gain the strength to fight Ganon. In Breath of the Wild, all of these are executed brilliantly and I could speak about its design both positive and negative, but mostly positive, for hours. However, this video isn't about that. This video is about me trying to imitate some of that second to second game design in my own little prototype, whilst further learning how to use Godot and for the very first time ever, trying to seriously produce something in 3D. Okay. So the first thing you need to start working in 3D is a 3D character controller. I had a rough idea how I wanted my beam to behave, a short amount of acceleration, a jump that goes up, you know, standard stuff. Contrary to a fair few prototypes, I actually wanted to get past my beam stage fairly quickly. When playing Breath of the Wild, the animations of Link are actually really important to how the character feels, so I wanted to tackle that early. I had hoped I could find something similar to the Unity Asset Store, where I could just import a fully modelled and rigged character with animations included. Uh, this wasn't the case. Turns out that it takes a lot of work, and so most people ask for money for that kind of thing, or just don't do it at all. For a good while, I tried experimenting with both modelling, rigging and animating a character myself, but for each attempt always ended up falling flat in the rigging stage, each time for different reasons. Eventually I ended up using the character and some of the animations from the GD script 3D character controller GitHub repository that I found. I did make a few animations myself, such as the jogging animation, and a few others you'll see later. Turns out that actually applying these animations is relatively easy, once I had learned how the Godot animation system worked. Now onto the fun stuff, some basic combat. I've made something for my player to punch, this beam will do, and proceeded to make it so that when the player goes up to them and punches them, they lose health and eventually die. Now, hmm, this, uh, this isn't fun uh, at all. Okay, obviously, even though the punch bag is taking damage, there is literally nothing to show for this, uh, which isn't particularly fun or tactile or very well designed at all. One really important thing I wanted to add is some knockback for the bean. This ended up not being too hard since the bean is a rigid body, it is as simple as just applying an impulse in the opposite direction to the player. So I made a function that would find a vector from itself to the player and send the bean flying in the opposite direction. This technically worked, but for some reason it wasn't behaving in the y-axis. Not to worry, I'll just take that out of the equation entirely. Nice. So a bit of polish, some particle effects and an attempt to make a shockwave shader before giving up after a few hours and replacing it with some more particle effects. I had something I was pretty pleased with. So next up is a ranged combat, so a bow and arrow I'm going to use. Honestly this works really similar to the punch, just with an arrow as my hitbox instead of this. I can carry most of the particles across and just add a few more animations to make it all work. At this point I have a fairly satisfying combat system, running around punching and firing arrows at my beans feels pretty good. I made a few basic sound effects to give each impact a bit more oomph, and I have something I feel fairly happy with. Now I do have a slight problem with this prototype at the moment. The truth is, it's not very challenging. My beans, they are, they don't do a whole lot to fight back. Okay, 
If I wasn't in Uncharted territory before, I definitely am now. I decided to try and make a basic state machine AI for my beam so it can fight back. Previously, I had avoided this at all costs, but that's not a great way to learn and it turns out it's not that complicated at a basic level anyway. For my game, I just have three states, idle, pursuing and attacking. Idle is self-explanatory, but the enemy will begin to pursue when the player gets within a certain range. I ended up making my own navigation algorithm since despawning enemies using the default nav mesh cause massive lag spikes. My algorithm basically just moves the enemy towards the player but has a 1 in 4 chance each second to go in a random direction, helping it get around obstacles. It's not very clever at all, but it creates the illusion of being clever pretty well. The final state is the attack state, when the bean is close to the player. It will charge an attack and then launch itself at the player using similar code to the knockback. A few more particles and a really crappy animation later, and the player is now able to be hurt. Look at his hurt ass, poor soul can't handle himself against the beans. Okay, so at this point of writing this script, I've done a bit more polishing and made a few basic levels just so I can publish the game on itch for you guys to try out. Uh, there is no fail state, which isn't really a good idea, uh, as it leaves the play with no consequences at all for bad performance. Other than that, I think I've built a fairly decent, if incredibly basic, prototype for a combat system. If the project didn't get messy towards the end, it would, and probably still will, uh, be something I can build upon in the future. Comparing it to its inspiration, I think it holds up rather well for an amateur in a couple of weeks with no experience in 3D before. I think the feel of throwing punches and firing arrows lines up fairly similar to the feel of swinging swords and using the bow in Breath of the Wild. Not only that, but I feel really comfortable in Godot now. I know I've said this in the last few videos, but this project I really have tried new things and moved quite a bit out of my comfort zone, and I've been rewarded with an incredible well of knowledge on the Godot engine. So what's next? Well. Uh, Bracky's Game Jam is next week, and I'm definitely going to be giving that a try. As well as that, I've got a few ideas for a bunch more 3D games, which I can't wait to get started on. But I also don't really want to elaborate on that, since you know what they say, actions speak more than words, and honestly, ideas will definitely change. Thanks again for watching this video though, if you did enjoy it, please give it a like and subscribe. Um, if not, then comment telling me why is probably the most helpful thing you can do.